Welcome back here today, Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT and we're continuing building Curse of Strahd. Uh, so in the last couple of videos, we've built our landing page uh, and there's just a couple of bits that I've filled out uh, just to kind of uh, finish this off a bit. We're not 100% finished, of course, because we've got to put character portraits in for our actual players and we've got a couple of more artifacts to put in. Um, so what I did do, as I mentioned at the end of the uh, previous video, is I've just put in these little triggers here so I can turn on, if you're seeing there, the images and things coming to life a bit. Um, so they are all now visible and accessible through the journal so the players can click on them and go straight in there. Um, if you're not sure what the heck I'm talking about, <laughs> go look at the previous video. Um, and I've got a reset button so I can click that and reset it. Um, and then open it again. Uh, now, interestingly, I just noticed while I was saying that, is I just opened one of the letters here. Um, let's uh, click this one again. It's made the letter visible. It hasn't updated the permissions. So let's just check I've done that right before we go any further. Uh, I'm fairly sure that was working. Um, but we did just look at that mod um, in the previous video that enables us to... Um, it gives us that little let me open the journal show you what i mean it gives us this little mark down the side here uh so that we know who uh who can view it who has ownership etc so we looked at that and what was that that was um um ownership viewer mod that's right so i've got that on um and that's not updated the way i thought that's just indicating that might be there's a problem uh, it should activate that tile should show that tile and it should change the permissions for coiland's letter so yeah, that suggests that that's working, but the party journal itself doesn't appear to be updating there. Hmm, now well, we did test it with Haley, and the button was working, so uh, let's not dwell on that, eh? Obviously, before we run the whole adventure, we would check all of our scenes are working. So anyway, I'm not here to do this. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to move on to create our first actual scene um, for our players and do that introduction. Now, the Curse of Strahd, if you're not familiar with it, I'll try and be brief. Um, Curse of Strahd gives lots of different ways of completing the adventure. Uh, and it's mostly to do with using like a, a equivalent of like a tarot deck to randomise a few things. One of the things it randomises is where certain items are, uh, where they're located for the players to find that help them in their ultimate battle against Strahd and his forces. So that's a really nice way of giving some playability. It's going to be slightly different every time they play. Um, it also gives you four potential starts for the module. Uh, one's called a plea for help, mysterious visitors, werewolves in the mist and the creeping fog. So it just gives you some ideas of how you might want to start your campaign. Uh, now I thought for this one, which way do I want to do it? I want that I want that really obvious transition between the world that the players are used to uh, and then suddenly the, the world of Strahd, the Ravenloft place that is, you know, dreary and everything else. So I need to have kind of like a bright start followed by that. So I thought I would go with the Mysterious Visitors. Let's see if I can do two things at once. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to create a new scene here. Um, call it mysterious visitors see i can't do two things at once i can't type and talk at the same time <laughs> rubbish at it <laughs> uh, and let me select my background image so it's going to be uh, in here in my maps in curse of strad and i don't believe i update uploaded this one at all uh da, 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 da. it's all my maps and my landing page and things like that so let's choose my image here i want to go into my scenes and my mysterious visitors so i've already got some images together ready to go for this and i'm going to have my initial background for the first kind of encounter area uh, as for the mysterious visitors uh, and i'm going to be using this um, so uh, first thing i want to do is get rid of that grid we don't need grids we're not using this for battle maps so we can make this gridless uh, anything I want to change on the basics, let's make sure we're kind of centred and we're looking um, at this part of the map to start with. I'm also going to make that border a bit... Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to make it a bit brighter, to be honest, uh, for this purpose, because I want this to feel reasonably bright and vibrant and what they're used to. Uh, grid, I've already um, said that, turn that off. 
uh, lighting, token vision, no, fog exploration, no, global illumination, yes. Uh, and ambience, I don't want any fog effects on here. Uh, and I might just leave that, possibly autumn leaves, but I might just leave that as is at the moment. Um, so it's a nice little image. Uh, good old AI, again, producing images for us. Um, and this is going to be kind of my backdrop for these mysterious visitors. Now this whole thing plays out with the idea of in the module it gives you that you know whether you're based around um where are you is it Dag dagger uh yeah you're based around daggerford yeah they put you there and they give you a little intro scene i'm not going to use that i'm going to use the encounter itself but they're not going to be sent there by the duchess or anything my players probably are going to be in and around Fandolin because they're going to be used to that area um and they're going to kind of know that area from previous adventures and things and they're going to be given the task of going to deal with these strangers in the area and go find out what's going on. Now, the idea is, is that they um, have this uh, discussion with these people. It's not combat. It's supposed to be, who are you? Uh, we're these people. Let us tell you a story. Um, and please come with us and help us. And if they choose to go with, uh, these are the Vistani. I think they're called Vistani. Yes, they are the Vistani. If they choose to go with the Vistani, which are very much kind of like the uh, the Roma Gypsy kind of feel to them, then they take them to Ravenloft and they take them through some of the initial locations to the, the Gypsy Queen, where they then start to learn about the area. Now, I'm going to modify that for my guys, is they are going to be basically given go and see the Gypsy Queen, but they are not going to be escorted by the Gypsies because I want their first major encounter to be the Death House. So I want them to have to make their own way, not being escorted, so suddenly they feel alone and trapped in this other world rather than, oh, hang on a minute, we're with the locals, we might be okay. So that's the way I want to handle it. I'm just going to put my own little twist on it. And of course, any adventure, we absolutely should be able to put our own little twist on it. Of course. Okie dokie. Right, so I need to put some tiles on here to uh, to show some of our people as we walk through this. Now, a big part of this scene, apart from meeting the individual people, um, is, the, um, is the story that they tell, the history of their people and while they never reveal quite what it is it's their history with Strahd and their relationship with Strahd um, and it talks about a campfire that has stories in it so I've got some other images here that I'm just going to bring in some of these tiles um, that's a bit larger than necessary isn't it let's bring that down to something a bit more sensible so I wanted to kind of talk about the uh, the gypsy children um, that they have um, and uh, what else have I got in here? The uh, uh, one of the gypsy women that I wanted to just have as an extra image. Just with, you know, I want to get them the feel of these of these uh, Vistani people um, and what they're like. Uh, and the main person they they talk to here is uh, is this chap uh, who is uh, uh, Stanimir. Stanimir. Okay, so we've got this chap too. So um, I might have these people, I might have Stanimir up here, and as he's telling his story, have these two others, when he talks about his family thing, family and things, these two other tiles fade in and fade out as he's talking about them. But I'm leaving the bottom bit a bit clearer, because as he's telling the story about the history, uh, they talk about um, this figure that, if you know, you know, um, about him on horseback um, and getting taken down by a spear. Uh, and the idea is, is there's figures form in the fire, uh, in the campfire. So we're going to have a look how we do that and how we do those transitions. Um, but we've got this image here that we can use for that sort of like initial talking about the horseman. I'm not going to bring the others in. Oh, I can. I might as well bring them in, I suppose. Um, and there's the one about uh, him fighting off the shadows, which is I've got this image for. So again, it's in a very similar flavour, sort of like that black and white kind, white, black and white kind of imagery, um, and him slaying his foes, and again, that same kind of black and white imagery. 
uh, all generated by AI. Um, but I wanted to have like these story bits as silhouette because I think that kind of, you know, <laughs> those images can kind of fade in and fade out as he's having that conversation with them. But I don't want to go much further than that um, with imagery and stuff I'm using in this one. So again, this is going to be similar to the landing pages. It's pretty much going to be driven by Monk's active tile triggers. Um, I don't really see that there's a better way to do it doing two-dimensional. It works really, really nicely. Right, enough gabbling then. How am I going to do this? Um, so I've brought this one in as a tile. So uh, what I'm going to do, uh, same with the landing page, is I need to have uh, at least one or two triggers uh, to let me know what I'm going to do with it. So I can, we're not going to be clicking on here at all, um, but we can certainly hide this. But I might want to do things like make it slightly less, uh, you know, slightly, uh, slightly less opaque, slightly more transparent, <laughs> whichever way you want to put it. Uh, we don't want it as overhead, we don't need to animate it. And actually, I don't need a tile trigger for this, so it's not active at all um, because this is going to be driven elsewhere. So if I just click off of that, just having that slight bit of transparency just makes it a bit, he can fade in and fade out again. So what I may have is a series of buttons here that when I click them, people fade in, fade out um, as we go through the story and we can just narrate along with it. So with these other ones here, um, we might be talking about his family. I'm going to have these fading in and fading out as well. And I quite like that idea of turning down perhaps to about 0.7. So these faces can kind of fade into view and then fade out of view again as he goes through it. And again, I don't need uh, tile triggers for those. Uh, same here, put it down to about 0.7. Um, and again, fade in, fade out. Um, <coughs> And it might be I fade them out even even a bit more. Um, we'll have to see. And again, you know, we, we have to also test these using a player character to see what things are really going to be like. Now, I've chucked these ones down here, but um, I'm not going to quite do it like that. I need to start with the horseman. Um, and I did contemplate getting rid of the background completely and just keeping the black image of the person on horseback and then in this one again getting rid of all of the background and just keeping this image of him with a sword and again just keeping this image of him with a sword doing the slaying uh, I did like I like the backgrounds on these but I'm not sure for this drop in the comments what do you think should we just literally use the silhouettes for this or should we use the image with the with the background as well um, let me know your opinion. I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. It's it, but uh, yeah, I'd be interested to know what you think about it. All right. So anyway, gabbling on again. It's what I do. So I'm going to fade these out a fair bit because we want this to be kind of not ghostly, but um, their image is in the smoke. So I want them to fade in. I still see the fire behind it. Um, and do it like that. Uh, now under triggers what I am going to do for this because I want this to change the image I'm going to use it in exactly the same place is <clears throat> unlike what I've done here is I actually want to go to images and I want to add these images specifically for this so uh, let's put in I need to do them in order um, to make sure that we've uh, now I've said that, just hovering a second. Uh, so it starts off with, just looking at the module, make sure I get these in the right order. Um, we cover, da, 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 da. As they dance this way, the dark shape appears in the bonfire. The dark shape in the fire takes on the form of a man being knocked from the horse with a spear piercing his side. So we're going to describe that. We've just got the picture of the horse. Uh, deep in the bonfire, you see the dark figure standing with sword drawn, fighting off a horde of shapes. So it is going to be this image next um, this one fighting off a horde of shapes so that's going to be our second image and then it does finish with the dancing fire the figure in the dancing fire vanquishes their final foe now they don't give an awful lot of description of what that foe is and things like that so we want to leave as much of that to the imagination and it's why i wanted to use like these silhouette figures it doesn't give much away and it's just nice enough to kind of 
set the scene. Um, there's, you can't tell anything about this individual, which is exactly how I want it. All right, so we're going to have that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, I could, of course, set up action so when I click on this tile, it cycles through those, and that would be a perfectly acceptable way to do it. My only problem is, is I don't want the players watching my mouse moving all over it. I'm going to have my mouse over here, so I'm going to use triggers off to one side that are doing that. So I'm going to update that tile, get rid of these two, because I just wanted to show you the pictures. Um, <clears throat> And now I need to just work through some of these buttons for us. So I'm going to cut and paste that. So that's going to be my button for the fire scene. Um, and uh, I'm going to copy paste this one. And, and again, there's a number of different ways we can do this. I don't need a button for each of them. I could, like with this, I could have these images fade in and fade out all on the same tile. But I thought I would just spread these out a little bit in this instance. So just creating the individual triggers that I want for this. And I can just click on them. So let's start with the top one. Um, what I am going to do is not that. <laughs> I'm going to hide these. Just make sure the players don't accidentally see them. All right. So when I click on this trigger, it's very, very similar to what we've done before. Um, we're going to go to the triggers. Um, I do want this always active, only usable by the GM when they click on it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, got a really croaky throat. I do apologise. Uh, and the actions we want to do is I want to uh, show hide this tile. Now, this is something we've not played with before. Is this duration in seconds? And it would have been sensible if I'd looked that up beforehand. So what does this mean? Does this mean it's going to show this for only this amount of time? I suspect that's what it is. Let's put in three seconds and see what this does. Let's see if that does what I think it does. Let's make this sure this tile is hidden. Okay, so we're going to click on our tile over here and it should reveal this. Oh, it's a bit hard to see, wasn't it? <laughs> and one of the reasons it's a bit hard to see is because I put the opacity down, um, so it's so it doesn't look too much different between uh, being um, activated or not. Opacity up, thank you. That's better. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, so I gave it a three-second count. So click now. So that looks like. Actually, what that did was take three seconds to fade in. So it faded in over a three second period to its maximum um, um, uh, opacity. <laughs> Braining is hard, all right? <laughs> okay, so that's not quite what I was expecting it to do, but that actually, that's quite useful. That's sort of what I was hoping it to do. I didn't want it to just go blam right in their face. So that's nice. We can do that. So clicking on this, um, it's not an activated tile. Uh, yeah, I'm clicking on the wrong one, you absolute donkey. Uh, over here. So actually, we can have that so he fades in, which is good. Now, uh, toggle might be what I want. So when I t click on it, it will fade him in or fade him out, whichever it might be. So that might be how I want to do that. So just to be annoying. And waste your time. I'm going to be an incompetent baboon. No, that's not. let's hide it. So let's try that and see if that's how we want. Because I want it to. So I'm going to click it. He's going to fade in as we're talking about him. He's telling his story and all of the bits that he needs to. And when we finished with him, probably at the end of this story, um, and they start to settle down to sleep, I can click it again and he slowly fades from view. And then if I click it again, he comes back and then I click it again and he goes away again. I like that and that's the effect I would like to have. I don't want suddenly this really sharp image in there. So with that in mind, I can... Uh, thank you. Back to basics. I can go back to that opacity and put it down to about 0.7. It's stuck this time. Good. So this one was already on opacity about 07. Yep, happy with that. So I'm going to repeat that process basically and say when I click this button, so the basics are, um, 
don't need opacity on the button itself that's fine uh, triggers uh, yes this is active only the GM can do it and it's when they click on it we don't need to worry about that yes allow when paused and the actions are going to be the show hide do, do, do. show hide this tile toggle and again five seconds so it should give us a nice gentle in it comes and then out it goes again as he moves on from his topics good right next one for these uh, young ladies down here uh, so again want we'll to put that up for the this uh, back to our triggers it is active don't need sight allow when paused yes the GM the allow when paused when we're doing it as GM that's irrelevant but <laughs> it's just habitually I click it uh, and again one click GM only and the actions are going to be same again um, and I've got a feeling quite a lot of our scenes are going to end up being like this through the whole adventure. So if we do find we're getting into a bit of a rut of like the same thing every single time, I will do plenty of it off, off camera rather than you kind of go, not another video of watching you set up the tiles in exactly the same way because that will get dull for you, won't it? And then you'll all leave me and then I'll be sad. Okay, so <laughs> what's wrong with me? Uh, we can click on this tile, it fades in and out. We can click on these young ladies and they should fade in and out as well. We can click on this older lady and again she's fading in. And then we click and she'll fade out again. And we can fade out these young ladies. So they those all work quite nicely and that's kind of how I wanted it. Um, <clears throat> and again, of course, I can reduce that opacity even more if I wanted to. Um, maybe down even to 0 0.5. Um, I might stick in a tragic story of losing um, losing some of their party or something like that. Um, in which case I can have these piece, people faded even more in and out. Right, now the slightly more interesting one, of course, is the figures in the fire. Which is a nice way of putting it, but uh, obviously I just made that up. Um, so for this trigger, what we want it to do... <coughs> excuse me. I told you, a bit croaky. Um, I'm going to leave that opacity down, but the first thing, when we click on this, GM only, when we click on this one, the first thing we want to do, uh, yeah, slightly unnecessary, is again, we want to, hmm, just thinking, we want to show, so this is going to be hidden initially, so we want to be able to show this. Um, so when we click it first, we want it to show. That's the first thing it's going to do. I've got click, click the tile, click the tile, of course. And again, I'm going to use that fade in thing. Um, what I want it to do is to have the. I was thinking. Sorry, thinking on the fly. What I was going to have was one button. When we click it, it changes that image. I'm just thinking about how that's going to work and we can do that and we can just say yeah just show the next image show the next image show the next image but what I want it to do is I want it to fade in then show the uh, I want it to fade in on the first click on the second click fade that image out fade the next image in and then on the third click fade that image out fade the next one in and I'm not sure that we can do that I mean I'm, we can do it absolutely that can be done but I'm not sure that that is necessarily the right way to do it. I think what we might do instead is... <clears throat> I'm going to bring those other tiles back that I got rid of. Right, get, get, go away. Go away for a moment. I think I will have them as separate tiles just overlapping each other. Um, and that way I can make sure that I'm using the right size. <laughs> not, not that big. Okay, so let's bring him down. Um, I want to try and make... The character about the similar kind of size uh, and again uh, and so it's this one as well bring you right down and make again the character about the same kind of size so it's a continuation of the same person in there so I think if we do that what we do clicking this button then um, <clears throat> just make sure the setup is it's active not anyone because I didn't save it GM does a click on this one what it's going to do is it's going to make sure 
We're going to do several things here. You've turned up to watch me brain, haven't you? So this image, sorry, this Im that image we don't need. We're going to hide that. Make sure that that is hidden. It should already be hidden anyway. Then, fucker. <laughs> uh, uh, not activate, deactivate, show hide. The this image, and make sure that one's hidden as well. Okay, so it's gonna make we're gonna make sure it hides the other two. Then what we're going to do is so I don't need these images here now, but there we go. Let's leave them there. Then what I want it to do is to again show hide. the image I want to show, show it, and fade that in for five seconds. Okay, so that's what I want it to do. Um, I'm going to, on these hide ones, I'm also going to add that five second fade on. It shouldn't be noticeable because in theory they won't be active. So clicking on this, it should fade those other ones out and then fade in the one we want over the, over the top. So if you're looking at the shadows here, now again, it's going to look different in the player view. Um, but when, we, when we're clicking on these things, it's kind of just changing and bringing them to the forefront, etc. The player view will be much crisper than this and we'll have to log in as the player to check that that is indeed correct. So I need to, let's crack on, shall we? Um, I need to take this one and go right with this. That's going to be the third picture in the story. So I need my second picture in the story as well so that's my second one so when we click on this one here uh, again I'm going to fade this out to about did I do the other one as 50% um, basic yeah yeah 50% through so yeah we'll have that as 50% as well I want them to be kind of the same uh, this is going to be an active button that only the GM can action when they click and the actions for this one is going to be pretty much similar to what the other one was. It's going to be the three show hides. So we're going to show So that first image. We're going to hide this one, take five seconds. Okay, the next tile, uh, this one is the one we want. So we're going to show and we're going to show this one five seconds and then that last tile which is that one in the middle there apologies if you can hear crashing around behind me pets <laughs> that tile there we're going to hide that one and again five seconds okay so we should get a nice smooth transition between the first and the second tile and then rinse and repeat for the final one so again this one here and we can separate these out a bit for the moment make it slightly easier uh, i'm going to turn that down to 50 percent go to our triggers active only by gm uh, on a click nice and easy uh, actions again so we're, we're just we're just doing this using this really one simple command of show and hide so for this one, we're going to be showing, oops, no, let's pick that one. We're going to be hiding that one. It's going to fade that one out if it's not already faded out, of course. And we're going to show hide that one, which should already be faded out. But let's put it in there to make sure we don't get any silliness, little errors and things like that. Um, you may have noticed I'm a little bit like that. It's like, just double check. It, it should be hidden already. Let's just make sure it is uh, and fade that one in. So now we've got those different tiles. When I click on this top one, um, we should see some changes. Uh, where is it? We should see this middle one uh, pop out a bit and make sure the other two are faded. And then we should be able to swap them between the different pictures. But like I say, because we've got these as quite um, faint images anyway, that's possibly not going to look, possibly not going to be able to see it particularly well on here. Let's stack them up again. So I'm quite happy with where the horseman is. Um, we're going to stick 
uh, you in here so this is what I mean about possibly getting rid of this background um, and then we're going to stick you on top all right so uh, what I haven't got is a button that just clears them all but that's fine I can manually do this all right, I'm going to be back in about a few seconds um, while I just log in as, uh, well, it'll be Haley, won't it? It's always going to be Haley. Uh, just going to log in as Haley, and then uh, we can do that. In fact, actually, look, I'm already doing, I'm halfway through it. Just give me a second here. Uh, da, 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 da. Haley is in, and she's in an active scene. Right, so I need to swap these windows over so that you can see what's happening here. Um, so let me give you this one. And then let me drag that one out behind. Sorry about the fuzziness there. Okay, so in my other window, I now have the uh, the GM one with the control of my buttons. You can see the GM cursor wibbling around on the screen that you can see here. And the GM side of things, I can click my button and hopefully, hopefully, we will see, oh, we will see things happening. Okay, so we've got this one fading in here. Uh, we should be able to fade in the children. Okay, so they're not fading in. They just popped in, didn't they? Uh, and again, popped in. And then if I click them again, then they do fade out. That's interesting. So click the young ladies. And they are fading in how I want. The first time, they popped in rather than faded in. Interesting. But then I can fade them out again. And that's quite nice, these little faces that are appearing and then disappearing again as he's talking through the story. I quite like that, even if I'm not necessarily in love with those borders. They're a little bit little bit sharp. Um, but what about our campfire story down here in the middle, just above that pause button? So we again, see that way that popped in. So it seems the first time they pop in. Uh, and then we can transition to the second one yeah it, it, they're popping in the first time if i go back to the first one now i think we get a better fade all right so this is obviously the, we start telling the story this is our image within there i'm leaning towards getting rid of that background um, and then as the story progresses it switches over one fades out the other one fades in and then we continue the story and the other one again fades out and fades back in to conclude that story. So that's kind of how I want this. What I haven't got though is a button to actually, I can't click that one again, because it's not toggling, um, to get rid of it. So he's gonna sit there for the rest of the encounter. So I do need a button that will clear off those guys and shut those down. Um, overall, I like the effect. Um, I like what we're doing here. So a couple of things be useful for you guys to make, uh, drop in the comments. What do you think about this? Are there things you think we could potentially do slightly differently that you would like to see altered? Uh, do we want to get rid of the background of these figures so we've literally just got the silhouettes? How do you feel about that? Um, you know, pros and cons, of course. Um, what do you think about these images at the top? Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, I have no problem with changing to general consensus um, because you guys have some great ideas. Um, and I haven't said it for a while, but always read the comments in these videos because there are people who have different ways of doing it, better suggestions and correcting some of my, um, not necessarily mistakes, but I might not be doing it the best way or there are alternative ways. So do read those comments. And of course, while you're down there, leave your own. That'd be nice. Um, that's it. I'm going to end this one. Um, we're getting there, aren't we? See you in the next one. Take care.